ಸುಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣೀಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರ್ಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಮೈ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಸಂತೋಷ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಜಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಎಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಡಿವೋಸನ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವೋಸನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಶ್ರವಣಂ means listening in last lectures now today we are going to discuss about second type of devotion that is kirtanam devotion means to any how by any way any way possible we attach our mind in the form of god this is devotion bhakti we have discussed about shravanam means how we can attach our mind in the form of god with the help of our ears or listening what we listen then by the way of listening our mind directly attached in the form of god now today kirtanam means our attachment with god is happen because of what we speak our words our speech can also our mind our speech also can be attached with the form of god but if we follow the rules of scriptures now what is meaning of kirtanam kirtanam means it does not mean only kirtanam means singing bhajans but what we speak or sing devotional or related to the god related to the form of god related to the powers of god related to devotees of god this all thing consider as kirtanam it doesn't means that only kirtan means to sing devotional bhajan but when we speak anything about the form of god or powers of god or any devotees of god then it also consider as kirtanam because while we speak such words about form of god then our mind automatically attach with the form of god and so such kind of our word such kind of our speech become a type of devotion <coughs> so we should consider all the things what we speak about god whether we sing about god <coughs> or even according to Sri Ji Maharaj's opinion in the Vachanamrut Maharaj also says even when we play while someone is singing devotional songs then playing tabla playing manjira playing any other instrument is also considered as type uh, type of devotion means kirtanam but many times we know that 
no doubt most of us always perform aarti always singing kirtan in front of god also doing prayers also chanting some hymns but sometimes what happen without consideration of the form of god without remembrance of the meaning of the words of whether aarti or kirtan or any hymns when we sing such things then those our words those our singing cannot be said as devotion because we are just uttering those words without understanding the meaning of those words without remembering the form of god so even though we are speaking about god we are speaking about the duty of god we are speaking about divine powers of god means anything related to god but at the time if we have no remembrance of the form of god or whether we singing devotional songs with praises the glory of god or we clarify which narrate the divine form of god but at that time we have no any remembrance of the form of god and we are just singing or we are just enjoying the music melodious music and beautiful voice of the singer at the time that is not our devotion that is just enjoying a sense gratification sensual gratification of ears and mouth speech that is nothing more than that but we should not do this we should understand the meaning of our routine we are always busy in our religious schedule from aarti to chesta and podanyu but sometimes we forget the form of god sometimes we forget to remember the meaning of those words and just like we play cassette in the tape recorder and those instrument automatically give us some noise some voice similarly sometimes we also make mistake and we also just stereotype speaking and singing but without any rem- remembrance of the form of god and without remembering and understanding the meaning of those words those all things are not devotion but just utterance bhagwan indicate these things in the 22nd vachanam to grada first chapter mara says if one does not remember god while singing to the accompaniment of a mrudang sarangi sarod tal or other instruments then that singing is as good as not having been sung at all so mara says here if we are singing or speaking about god or when we when we are singing with the instruments but at the time we have no remembrance of the form of god then mara says here it is as good as not having been sung means our bhakti our devotion is zero that is only the waste uh, wasting of time nothing more because <clears throat> when what is the meaning what is the purpose of our singing our s- purpose of singing is to attach our mind to the form of god by the way of singing we want to remember the form of god and and if we forget to remember the form of god 
then our purpose is not fulfilled and so that is even though we are singing devotional songs we are singing songs written by our nan santo but still they are not devotion that is that is not devotion that is not kirtanam why because sri ji mara says here in this world there are many people who sing and play instruments without remembering god but they do not attain peace of mind the another thing is peace of mind when a duty of god with instrument or without instrument when duty start to sing any devotional hymns or any devotional songs with the remembrance of god with his deep sentiment his his feelings towards god then he definitely attain peace of mind he has no concern at the time with his surrounding his belongings even his body and he at the time he become brahmarup and directly attached with the form of god and other person who who is also singing with all the instruments but if he has no remembrance of the form of god he cannot attain peace because he is singing only to fulfill his desire to sing he is not singing for devotion he is not singing for god so mara says here therefore whichever activity one performs whether it be singing devotional songs reciting god's holy name chanting the narayan dhun etc one should only perform that activity while remembering the form of god means while any activity without remembering the form of god that is zero that is not devotion and if if we are not singing any devotional songs but if only we chant a holy name of god but at the time we have remembrance the form of god so that will become our devotion to god because that only one single word become a bridge between our mind and the form of god and so it is devotion without remembering the form of god that is not devotion now in history there are so many devotees outside from this satsang and also in this satsang at the time of sri ji mara there are so many santos and devotee who has this type of devotion in in their life when we are talking about singing and kirtanam we definitely remember sadguru premanand swami muktanand swami brahmanand swami sri ji maharaj had eight main singer santo and all those santo they are not singing like us but they are singing while remembering the form of sri ji maharaj and so their devotion is at the time on the top level not only this but while they they were starting to sing and throughout their singing sri ji maharaj himself attentively listen to singing and maharaj also like 
we know incidents of sadguru premanand swami sadguru premanand swami had too much love for his beloved sri ji maharaj once upon a time in gadda at the time of late night he was singing kirtans in praise of maharaj with his sarangi under the neem tree and sri ji maharaj was sleeping in his residence in aksarodi but sri ji maharaj cannot sleep even though he had tried too much to sleep but he could not sleep so because of premanand swami singing premanand swami was singing with the remembrance of sri ji maharaj divine form and so sri ji maharaj also remember premanand swami's divine words which at the, at the time sanctify all the atmosphere and sri ji maharaj himself got up and went to went to those on uh, uh, near the neem tree and stood be- behind the premanand swami till the morning when there was morning and premanand swami concluded his singing and at the time when premanand swami also wake up all his all his instruments and all other things and just he try to stand at the time he understand that behind me there was sri ji maharaj so suddenly with surprise premanand swami asked maharaj maharaj why are you here maharaj said as you are singing with such deep love then i cannot even sleep and i cannot remain in my aksarodi and so from wh- from when you were you were singing i was stood here it is not i but your love your love is capable to fetch me or here and so i am very pleased upon you and your divine love because premanand swami was not just singing but he was singing with full of sentiment full of his love for the form of god if we also when we when we start to sing with devotion with love for god with remembrance of god at the time maharaj also like to listen our singing just like muktanand swami muktanand swami also one day muktanand swami at the night was singing at the residential hall of sadhus in gadda and maharaj was just try to s- sleep in his residence in aksarodi and maharaj could not sleep because muktanand swami was singing devotional songs with the remembrance of sri ji maharaj divine form so maharaj himself went to muktanand swami to listen his devotional songs and after listening he had gathered an assembly and that is the very first assembly of vachanamrut and those divine words of that assembly written by nand santosh and in the first vachanamrut of gurda first chapter and due to love maharaj become very pleased upon this santo maharaj himself 
says in the 48th vachana of the guruda second chapter when premanand swami was singing vandu sahajananda rasroop after he had finished singing sri ji maharaj commented the devotional songs you sung were very nice after listening to them i thought in my mind since this sadhu contemplates upon god's form in this way let me get up and prostrate before him so when one any person or any devotee has constant remembrance of the form of god at the time god also please with those devotee and here sri ji mara say i want to prostrate before the premanand swami because he has constant contemplation while singing no doubt when we try to meditate while closing our eyes and sitting in lotus style of indian sitting and with the help of light music <clears throat> at the time we can easily concentrate our mind to the form of god but while singing even singing with the instruments at the time to keep our mind only and only the form of god is very difficult and so this difficult task is also performed by his sadhu so maharaj please with premanand swami and given this statement because he want to preach other devotees like us how to how to sing not just singing for the our hobby or our desire but only when we are singing we should remember this incident or premanand swami and maharaj and we should try to try to make our singing into devotion into bhakti the other thing is that no doubt it is fixed early morning we have to perform aarti of god we have to prayer and also chant sometimes a holy name of god in the form of dhun also in the evening we have to perform aarti chant another hymns prayers kirtans dhun chesta all these things but if at the time we cannot concentrate our mind on the form of god those time in the morning and in the evening those hours if we have no remembrance the form of god so that time is nothing but nothing but just labor work but if at the same time while singing those things we remember the form of god our time saved and we can change our daily routine into daily devotion so this is what our daily spiritual routine but we should not consider it as a routine but we should understand such time such things as our daily devotion so when we consider such thing as daily devotion at the time we at least can try to meditate on the form of god try to understand the meaning of words which we are singing at the time and more glory of chanting the holy name of god is also described in other scriptures basically in the fifth vachana of the guruda last chapter sri ji maharaj recited the words from the shrimad bhagavat and glorify the glory of chanting the name of bhagwan maharaj says yanna madeya sarvanano kirtanat these words and uh, and the meaning of these words is that oh lord even a swapach means a person 
whose duty is to fetch any dead animal and all this such kind of lower thing means a person who is uh, born in lower caste becomes immediately suitable for performing yagna because in in the vedic ceremonial any offerings or any ceremonies a low born person cannot cannot perform those things but mara says here any low born person immediately become to perform any sacrificial ceremony but while but when only merely by hearing and repeating the name of god when a person who is born in low caste even by mistake he listen or chant the holy name of god at the same time he will become like pure like a brahmin because only brahmin can perform sacrificial ceremony yagna but the chanting of holy name is not the only chanting the name but it is the machine which change the person from low caste to higher caste that is from impurity to purity if this chanting make a person who is low born uh, who is born in low caste into very higher caste means in brahmin then why this chanting cannot transfer our impure heart into pure heart so not for any other meaning or any other purpose but if we chant this holy name of god only to purify our heart then our heart definitely become pure now the question <clears throat> is that when we speak anything about god or any other thing how it can become a devotion because gunatitanan swami says in his first talk one should always speaking and listening about the glory of bhagwan glory of sadhu and glory of devotee what is the benefit of speaking about the glory of bhagwan and santo and bhakto so niskunan swami says koi kaise asant bahu sara re khara kalyan na karna ra re et lo jaguna koi le shere te to brahm mole vas de se re means any person who only just speak that this sadhu is very good in character they are the grantor of liberation merely speaking such words for true sadhu one can attain divine abode of god because these words such kind of words which glorify the sadhu is not merely the words merely the speaking but that is devotion and that is why the soul who speaks such words definitely and automatically attach to the form of god and so it becomes a devotion so let we try to make our daily routine as daily devotion and whenever we chant or recite any hymns or singing any devotional songs try to remember the form of god and try to understand the meaning of those words jai swami narayan hari krishna maharaj ni jai now ajit bhagat will give a <coughs> very nice speech 
on Vachinamrut. प्रश्न पुलिस आज इंग्लिश में संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पमी ए पूरन पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुधा कल्प तरु पारस चिंता मनि चार संत समान ते एक नहीं मैं मन मा करो विचार हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे गणश्याम महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ओमाइडी लॉर्ड स्वामी नारायण द पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन आर पूज्य पाद गुरुजी पूज्य स्वामी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज माय हंबल जय स्वामी नारायण I'm going to first start out with a quick fact. Did you know that the human brain the human brain has the capacity to hold 5 times as much information as the encyclopedia? You may not have heard of that. Many I know what an encyclopedia is. But more than that, in electric terms you know how we in electronic and computers there's mbs gbs tbs meaning megabytes gigabytes terabytes our brain has the capacity to hold information from 3 terabytes to 1000 terabytes 1000 in between that depending on each person their capacity the human brain has that much capacity to hold information yet in science it's known that we only use 0.1% of our brain throughout our whole lifespan no throughout our whole lifespan a human only uses 0.1% of his brain meaning the other 99.9% is wasted the archives in britain there is a library in britain which holds information of history of britain history over 900 years of history that information is only 70 tbs and the human brain can hold between 3 to 1 yeah 70 tbs that information only holds 70 tbs but the human brain can hold up to 3 to 1000 tbs now these are just scientific facts and you might be wondering why am i telling you these facts but there's a deeper perspective that i want you to go towards that's why i'm setting up the background humans are the most intelligent species on earth more than animals more than any creature creatures or animals are very muscular and strong but they have no intelligence making them lower than humans but humans are the most intelligent of all the species in the world 
Intelligence is their greatest value, asset, you can say. If a human did not have intelligence, then he would be considered like an animal. But since he has intelligence, since he can tell between right and wrong, I can do this, I cannot do this, he knows. That's why his value rises in society, in earth, you can say. But the question remains, who can be called intelligent? A person who has an IQ of 200? A person who got a 2200 on their SAT scores? Albert Einstein? Can he be considered intelligent? He's discovered many, many formulas. He's discovered many, many everything about science he's discovered and he's considered to be the most smartest person that ever lived is he really considered to be smart in the perspective of Sriji Maharaj let's look let's take a look according to the Vachnamrut Gadara first chapter 50th Vachnamrut Sriji Maharaj says that one who possesses a sharp intellect attains God. Can the intellect of one who is proficient in managing worldly affairs be called sharp or not? Also, can the intelligence of one who is very proficient in interpreting the Sastras and the Purans, can he be called sharp or not? Now, Bhagwan's question is, a person who has very sharp intelligence attains God. But Bhagwan is questioning the people who are sitting in front of him that a person who can interpret scriptures, who can read very well, who can write very well, is he considered to be to have a sharp intelligence? What do you think? No. Some people might say yes, some people might say no. But main factor is what is Sriji Maharaj saying? What is, what is his perspective? That's what we want to look at today. Reading on further, then Sriji Maharaj explained, some people may be extremely adept in worldly affairs, yet they do not know anything about to safeguard their liberation. Now Bhagwan is saying, many people are smart in worldly affairs. Worldly affairs meaning running a business, running a store, being smart in school, engaging oneself in the stock market, and actually getting money back. These are all worldly affairs. Everyone does on a daily basis. Bhagwan is saying, is a person who engages in worldly affairs, can that person be called smart? Can he be called intelligent? While I'm asking this question, I also want you to think that is this correct? Because this is what I do on a daily basis. Am I con considered to be intelligent? You may do it really well. You may do it so well that everyone else praises you that you're really good at running a business that you're really good at the stock market. But what does Bhagwan Swaminarayan think? That's what we want to understand today. I had a st small story for you. In the time of Sriji Maharaj, Swami was, Sriji Maharaj was sitting in Gadara and he called for one of his younger saints named Dayanand Swami. So, Sri Maharaj says, please call Dayanand Swami. Dayanand Swami came and folded his hands. Ha Maharaj. Maharaj said that I want you to go to the city of Botad and do preachings to devotees as well as non-devotees there. Meaning do satsang, preach to them about who Bhagwan Swami Narayan is, his glory, his greatness the glory of his saints, the supremacy of Bhagwan. 
preach to them. This is what I want you to do. Then Swami immediately folded his hands. Maharaj, Maharaj, I cannot do this task. All this time, you've been asking me to do something and I've been following. But this time, I will not be able to follow your command. I'm so sorry. Maharaj asked, why? Swami said, I am very illiterate, meaning I do not know how to read the scriptures. I have no knowledge about the scriptures. I am not studied. I have not taken any form of education. What will I do? I don't know how to preach to other people. I don't know how to do satsang. What will I do? Maharaj said, don't worry. Call Sankhyanan Swami. So Sri Maharaj had someone called Sankhyanan Swami and Swami came and folded his hands. And again, Bhagwan requested Swami, Swami, please go to Bhotad and do satsang there of the glory of Sri Maharaj, of Swami and Bhagwan. Swami again, same situation as Dayanand Swami. I cannot do it because I am also illiterate. I have not studied the scriptures. I don't know any background about any of the scriptures to prove that Bhagwan is supreme. Sri Jimaraj then explained to both the saints that it's not about if you know the scriptures or if you have not studied. Do not worry. Your noble character will show that you are true inside. Through your pure and noble character, everyone, satsang will flourish automatically. So, Sri Jumarj blessed them and they left to go to the city of Bhotad. There, both saints started to preach whatever they knew about Bhagwan, who he is. But, all the devotees, as well as all the people who are non-devotees, they saw that both the saints had very strong niyams. Both the saints had strong code of conducts. Both the saints were very true vairagis, meaning they were completely detached from the world. They did not have contact with money or they did not contact the women. They ate very little. They saw their whole lifestyle. Due to that, when those saints preached, the non-devotees also became devotees and those devotees became even firm devotees. This proves that even if those saints were illiterate, they didn't know much about the scriptures, due to their pure character, due to their faith in Maharaj, due to their staunch devotion, their niyams, their code of conducts, they came out and did satsang to uh, the, the devotees in Bhotans. Back to my point, what is Sri Jimarad saying? He is saying that is a person who knows how to read the scriptures called sharp? Does he know? He's saying that is a person who can manage worldly affairs, can he be considered to be intelligent? But the true fact is that Bhagwan says the person who is smart, the person who has intelligence, such a person safeguards his liberation. Meaning in Gujarati, Kalyanu Jatan Kare, we can say. In English, it's called safeguarding one's liberation. Let's take a look at that word, safeguard. Many people don't know what that word means. But it means to protect, to protect one's liberation. You might be thinking, how can you protect your liberation? Let me give you an example. Suppose you have a diamond that's very expensive in your home. Now that diamond is in your home. Someone gave it to you. But you understood the value of the diamond. Then how much precaution, how much would you want to protect that diamond? What would you do? Just think. 
First and foremost, you would buy a safe for it, a very heavy duty safe. That's number one. Number two, you would put a barrier around your house, a fence around your home, so no one can get inside. Number three, you would put security cameras everywhere around your home and inside of your home so that you can see that no one is coming in. Those security cameras will be infrared, night vision cameras, as well as daylight cameras. Best technology you would get. Why? Because you've understood the value of what you're protecting. In the same exact way, that diamond is in the form of liberation. Liberation meaning moksha, meaning getting out of this life cycle of birth and death and attaining the abode of God and staying in the service of Bhagwan Swami Narayan in his Akshar Dham. This is called moksha. This is called liberation. If one understands the value, then one would want to protect it in any way. Protect it in how? In what way? Meaning the association of saints. One would protect it by associating with saints. One would protect it by having dharma, bhakti, gnan, vairagya. One would protect it by understanding the glory of Bhagwan and his saints. This is what one would do in order to rise, in order to protect that liberation. But back to our Vajshnamut. Bhagwan wants us to be smart. But in what way? In the way of liberation. In the way of protecting one's moksha. In the way of becoming more involved in religion and less involved in the worldly activities. Nevertheless, all of you are householders, so you must daily go to school, go to work, pay the bills. You must, whoever is an adult, pay bills, pay taxes, whatever responsibilities you have, you must do. As a child or as a student, you must go to college or you must go to school, do your homework. These are all necessary elements of your life. But even further, you must also engage with santos. You must also do sant samagam. Due to that, this is called protecting or safeguarding one's liberation. And I got the perfect story for that. It's called Quest for Water. In the time of Sriji Maharaj, there was a great devotee by the name of Surakachan from the village Loya. One time, Surakachar and Sriji Maharaj wanted to go to Vartal, from Gadpur to Vartal. Now, while they were crossing the region, they came across desert region, Baldes, they call it, very arid and dry area. They were crossing it, and Bhagwan got very, very thirsty. Very thirsty. And due to that, Bhagwan told Sudhakachar, go and fetch me some water. So, Sudhakachar went and started looking for water for Bhagwan. So while Sudhakachar was looking, he could not find anything in sight because it was a desert. But in a distance, he saw a small boy who was farming, and he went to that boy. And Sudhakachar folded his hands and asked, Do you have some cold water? At first, the boy was frightened because Sudhakachar was very, very, you can say, obese, fat. But seeing that Sudhakachar had a very good nature, the boy gave the water to Sudhakachar, a pot of water. Now Sudhakachar thought in his head that my liberation is granted. I'm going to go to Akshardham no matter what. Because I have met Sriji Maharaj. I know who he is. The Supreme Lord. But for this small boy. This small boy. What about him? And when I give this water to Sriji Maharaj. He will ask me for a boon. He will ask me. Ask for, ask for something. I'm happy. Ask for anything. But. I am already fulfilled. I do not need anything. 
but this boy he does not know anything about moksha he does not know anything about bhagwan but if i tell the boy to come along with me and then have him offer the water to shri ji maharaj then bhagwan will become pleased on him and then have him ask for something but before sura khachar took the boy to bhagwan sura khachar was wondering what will this boy ask for so sura sura khachar asked the boy bhagwan will ask you for something when you go to him because you have brought him this water what will you ask for the boy said my father has 50 acres of land i will ask for another 50 acres of land so there will be a total of 100 acres sura khachar thought that this boy is wasting his wish so let me tell him something about bhagwan swami narayan so there sura khachar did katha to the boy about bhagwan swami narayan is the supreme lord he has manifested on this earth and he is here in front of you so if he asks ask for moksha do not ask for anything else so the boy agreed and he said okay i will ask for moksha so sura khachar and the boy went to where shri ji maharaj was and there the boy offered water to maharaj maharaj drank the water and became very very pleased so bhagwan said i am very happy upon you please ask for something the boy said i will ask for moksha maharaj please give me moksha shri ji maharaj said that this boy he has not associated with my saints how can he know to ask for moksha then bhagwan knew that sura khachar had taught him to ask for moksha and sura and bhagwan there became very pleased about sura khachar as well but the moral of the story is the boy safeguarded his liberation meaning he protected his liberation why because when sura khachar first asked the boy what will you ask for the boy asked for 50 acres of land but then sura khachar taught the boy that do not ask for that ask for moksha so the boy had faith inside of sura khachar due to that the boy protected his liberation and at the end of his life bhagwan himself came and took him to akshardham so for all of you viewers today my main message shri ji maharaj's main message in gadda first chapter 50th vachramrut is that sure we may be called intelligent in the world because of our grade point average because of our sat scores because of our iq or because we have good grades but more than that our true intelligence is to protect our liberation that no kusangi or no bad people come and take that away from us so bhagwan's message is to beware of any bad people and protect your liberation in order to attain god on an easy path saying this my humble jay swami narayan shri patim shri dharam sarva deveshwara bhakti dharmatmanam vasudevam hare madhavam kesavam gamdam karam swami narayanam nilkandam bhaje hari krishna maharaj ni jay